Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to another helping of my favorite foods. Today I'm taking on an Italian favorite combination of zesty, flavorful meatballs all bubbling away in a fresh, quick tomato sauce. Get ready for my take on spaghetti and meatballs. Let's go. There's so much to discuss. While we discuss, let's make a quick tomato sauce, shall we? So, the idea of the Italian tomato sauce is simplicity. So, while I chop my garlic, we're going for godfather thickness of garlic here. Super, super thin. It's really essential to not get this temperature up too high because then it's gonna burn and then you're in big trouble. So a little bit of olive oil in a saucepan, low heat. Now after the garlic, I'm just gonna add a little pepperoncino or little spicy hot peppers. These are dried pepper flakes, preferably a good quality though. The thing about spaghetti and meatballs is Yes, it is Italian, but it's Italian via America. So it's the Southern Italian immigrants who mostly came from Naples, Calabria, but I would say mostly Naples. When they came and made their trek to America, they obviously brought their culinary skills, their know-how, their culture with them. Meatballs were on the menu. But in Italy, meat was expensive and really hard to come by. So once they found meat to be so inexpensive and plentiful in America, the meatballs started to get massive. So it, it is kind of interesting how these recipes travel and how they morph and how they change. And all of a sudden, spaghetti and meatballs is a thing, but it's not a thing in Italy. My nose is now telling me via the chili and the garlic that it's time to add the tomato. I don't want this garlic to color at all because it's gonna really introduce a bitter note to this. In is gonna go the tomato. I don't care how great a chef you are, if you're starting with crappy tomatoes, you're not gonna make a good sauce. So these are from the south of Italy, the San Marzano tomato from the region of San Marzano outside of Naples. And they pack them generally with a little bit of basil, that's what's in there. But right away, it just smells like fresh tomatoes. For me, the test of a good canned tomato, or in this case, in glass, is if I pick it up and taste it, how does this taste? And really, this is what I do all the time. Like, how do you know when it's in the jar? Let me taste this. It's sweet, has a little acidity on the end, but it tastes like a fresh tomato. That's a good tomato. Heat, adding a little bit of salt. And really, I'm just gonna adjust maybe with some pepper. I'm gonna bring that to a boil, a gentle simmer. I'm gonna cover it. Then we can talk meatballs, right? I'm using two parts beef and one part pork. So you can see here that the pork is quite fatty and we want that fat because that fat is gonna melt away as the meatball cooks and it's gonna give the meatball its tenderness and moisture. I'm using an onion, a raw onion, and because the onion is raw, what I'm using is a Spanish onion. So this is a sweet onion, an onion that you would use as a garnish or that you could eat raw, and I'm grating it. Onions are in. Where are we gonna go next? The bread. The thing about how these recipes originated, this is some old bread that I have. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I had some old baguette that looks pretty gnarly. So I just soak that in a little bit of water for about 20 minutes or so. In times when these recipes were created, it was all about necessity and using everything that you had. Now I'm gonna add two herbs to this. I, this is a rare time that I'm actually using oregano that's fresh, so I'm gonna chop up some fresh oregano and add it. So fresh oregano going in. Now a giant handful, as much really as you want, but to me it can't have enough fresh parsley. I mean, also being Greek, for us, meatballs are loaded with herbs. I mean, we use so many herbs in everything, so I probably exaggerate the amount of parsley, but I love it.
herbs are in. I want to check on my sauce because I hear things happening and I want to make sure that things are going well. Let me show you. This is actually perfect. I want you to see the level that it's simmering at. This is a good bubbling level. A little bit of cracked black pepper. I'm gonna give it a double dose of the chili flakes, but you can omit those if you like. My secret umami bomb for pretty much anything that has to do with meat is a little Worcester. Fish sauce, little tamarind. This has all the things that you never know is in there, but it brings everything together. So shh, don't tell anybody. Seasoning with salt. And you've got to season this properly. I mean, you don't want to kill it because I just find, I don't know, things are way too salty. Let's go to the egg, which is going to really bind everything together. So just one egg. The last ingredient, which is very, very common in an Italian version of a meatball, and probably a lot more even in Italy, would be pecorino romano. This is some not Parmigiano Reggiano, it's another kind of uh, Parmesan style cheese, but what it's going to add is again another savory note. If you want it to be more intense, you can go with Pecorino Romano, saltier. Now, the other thing I wouldn't do is buy pre-grated cheese because that's always the dregs. Anytime you buy that grated cheese in the supermarket, it's the dregs, sawdust, you have no idea what you're getting. That's looking pretty good. The deal here is you want to work it enough to kind of work the meat so that it holds together with the bread and the egg, but you don't want to go overboard so that they get spongy or springy. So that's the key if you can kind of find that magic spot. These, I think in America, have become quite massive. I've seen meatballs just like gigantic that you get one. I think the optimal size personally is about like that, just more or less like a golf ball, but to me, what fits in the palm of my hand. I think that's a good size meatball. This is a great thing to get kids involved in. This is a great Sunday project, weekend project. You make a mess of meatballs and you got food for a few days. You know, one day you could put them over pasta, next day you could put them in a sandwich, you could make some rice. Possibilities, endless. Now that the meatballs are shaped, I'm gonna take my sauce and just let it simmer on the back burner. And I'm gonna bring my pan that we're gonna fry the meatballs. To make the ultimate meatball, there's lots of possibilities here, but the frying of them really gives you that outer beautiful crust, that Maillard reaction, that when meat meets heat, then you have angel singing. That's what you want. Now in a pinch, have I taken meatballs, poached them in sauce? Yes, I have, it's possible. Have I taken meatballs, popped them in the oven just to bake them on a tray? Absolutely possible. But here I'm giving you the ultimate way for the best meatball. It's amazing how smell is connected to memory and food, I mean, it, it can't be more of a direct connection. I'm smelling this right away, even though these are a little bit, obviously an Italian style meatball, it takes me to my dad frying meatballs in his undershirt in the kitchen with just a colossal mess. So splashing, oil everywhere, but those meatballs <laughs> were so good. Lots of love, a lot of mess. Do we have it? Let's see. Yeah, you see? That is what I'm getting excited about. For some people, it's diamonds. For me, it's caramelized meat. Here it's also super important to note, I'm not crowding the pan. That's, again, number one rule of anything that you're cooking. If you put too much in the pan, temperature drops right away and then everything starts to boil and steam. And why are we frying our meatballs to begin with? Intoxicating. 
tomato sauce back on the front burner. And now our meatballs are gonna go have a nice swim in here. There we go. 25 minutes or so really, I don't wanna again cook these too long. In the meantime, I'm gonna put my pasta water on. Spaghetti and meatballs, imminent. Let's go to the bubble cam. Now what I wanna do is very gently fish my meatballs out. So this is still simmering gently. I'm gonna put the pasta right in here. I'm not straining it traditionally. This is more restaurant style. I'm dragging in a little bit of that pasta water. This way of just cooking that pasta for the last 30 seconds in the sauce, you know what happens. This is my drill, it just absorbs that sauce. I wanna make sure I'm golden on my cooking. Taste before the taste for you. Oh, I don't even have words for that. All right, a little bit more cheese going into the pasta. Now, plating, family style. This beautiful sauce. Because to me, that's how pasta should always be served, family style. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that sauce over top. Meatballs coming in. This is just how it is. They're coming in fast and furious because to me, you really wanna focus on the food. A little bit more cheese. <laughs> Crazy, I'm insane, over the top. Let me taste the meatball first. Look how beautiful this is, and I wanna show you how tender and beautiful that meatball cuts, right? That's the whole. Wow, what a beautiful texture that is. Just that little bit of bread and the cheese, and it's just tender but you've got that outer texture. Flavor is right on the money. Please try my take on spaghetti and meatballs, my great Italian-American combination. Thank you for joining me on another helping of my favorite foods. Please subscribe, like, share. Let's have some more fun in the kitchen. Thank you for joining me. Manja, manja, manja.